3D printed musical instruments are apparently a thing now, and I've seen people 3D print a variety of instruments, but there's one specific instrument that people just don't 3D print for some reason, the piano. And I think I just found out why. But instead of being smart and leaving it alone, I decided to build the world's first fully 3D printable mini piano. And let me tell you, it did not go how I expected. But before I could 3D print even my first prototype, I needed to find out how pianos actually work and it turns out they're really complicated. They have these hammers that strike the strings to make a musical sound. But that's not the complicated bit. The complicated part is the actual key mechanism. Because of how string instruments produce sound, a striking object like a guitar pick or a hammer in this case cannot remain in contact with the string after striking it as it will dampen and kill the sound. So unless you want all of your piano notes to sound like poorly concealed, slightly melodic farts, you need to use this super complicated mechanism that allows the hammer to retract quickly after hitting the string. This also allows you to play the same note multiple times in quick succession. Now the reason I'm even mentioning this is because I think this is going to be a huge problem for us. I made a 3D printable typewriter a few months ago and one of the designs had a similarly complex mechanism which was super unreliable because there were a lot of moving parts and 3D printed parts almost never retain the same tolerances when you change printers or even use another brand of filament. This is not looking good so far so I'm just gonna pretend like I didn't see this part and move on. The next thing we need to look at are materials that could potentially produce sound for our piano. And I want to try and stay as true to the real thing as possible, which would mean we would have to buy a set of piano strings. And we're not doing that. After some googling for alternatives, I found this guy who made a 3D printed xylophone. And while it isn't exactly what I was looking for, it is indeed another percussion instrument like the piano. So we might be able to get something useful out of this and it doesn't really work for me. Maybe I'm doing something wrong, but this sounds about as musical as clubbing a seal underwater. But this little detour did give us the first piece of the puzzle in the form of resonators. They're the seemingly useless set of pipes of various lengths under the xylophone, and they basically help enhance the sound of the bars. Upon bonking these resonators repeatedly with a toothbrush like a desperate baboon, I discovered that they are tuned to the specific frequencies of their corresponding notes, and if you strike them instead of the bars, they just produce a way better sound than the 3D printed xylophone bars. As much as I would love to just line these pipes up, hand you a toothbrush, and call it a piano, this is just the first step. After this, we need to refine these pipes to make them as loud and clear as possible and then choose an octave for our piano that works the best with our space and material constraints, which I'll explain more about in a bit. Coming back to how these pipes work, I found a simple formula that tells me how long each pipe should be for a given musical note, but at this point we have a choice that we need to make. Do we make both ends of the pipe open or should we go for an open closed configuration? With both ends open we would get a slightly louder sound but we would have to make the pipes twice as long as we would need to for the open closed configuration. Which brings us to the space limitations that I mentioned earlier. See, most 3D printers have a build volume of roughly 25 centimeters cubed, so my goal was to make the tallest pipe shorter than 25 centimeters. And with both ends open, the required pipe length for the middle C note, which as the name suggests is in the middle of the piano, is 65 centimeters or a bit over 2 feet, which is roughly half the size of my piano. Now that is obviously not going to work for us, so we're going to go with the open close configuration and try building our piano around the C5 octave, which is again around the middle of the piano, so it will neither be too bassy nor too shrill. After this, I refined the pipe design a bit further by testing out various end cap and pipe wall thicknesses, and this design with really thin but solid walls works the best for me. Now that we've settled on a design, we can print a complete set of C5 pipes just to check whether their frequency matches with their corresponding notes. And it's close enough. It'll be very hard to get the exact theoretical number with a bunch of variables like filament type and layer height, but it's good enough for this build because it does sound musical as you can hear for yourself now.
Okay, now that we're done with the musical part of the piano, we need to start working on the keyboard and I was just not looking forward to it, mainly because of the super complicated key mechanism. But right before I was about to give up and crap out another Beyblade video out of shame and desperation, I discovered something that would drastically change the scope of this project. And before I tell you more about it, I want to thank my sponsor for this video, PCBWay. If you guys want to build something, whether it's a robotics project or a mechanical one like some of my other projects, or even if it's something more industrial like CNC or 3D printing, whatever you could possibly need, these guys can help. They've helped me with my past projects and their services are extremely affordable for the quality that you're getting with a quick turnaround. So it's a total no-brainer if you're starting a build project of your own. They're also running a project design contest as well as a mascot 3d printing design contest check them out at the links in the description now back to the video while I was testing the pipes I realized something weird it doesn't really matter if I pull the hammer back or just leave it pressed against the pipe it sounds exactly the same which means I don't have to worry about the super complicated hammer retraction mechanism used in real pianos I can just design a mechanism that strikes the pipe when a key is pressed and retracts when the player lifts their finger from the key. This new discovery saves us at least a week of work and I want to use this extra time to get a head start on the rest of the build. Six months later. The humorous implication being that I am Wiley Coyote. I was somehow a few days behind schedule at this point. So after a bit of quick brainstorming, I came up with this rather simple solution. With just about 10 degrees of key travel, this hammer strikes its corresponding pipe with enough force to make a decently loud sound, and then when you lift your finger up, the hammer retracts because of this rubber band pulling on the front end of the key. Now, this is a great starting point because we can replicate this for 5 black and 7 white keys, and this is what that looks like. I've had to add some spacers in between the hammers and the keys so that they don't directly rub against each other and jam up when you play notes quickly. Also, the intellectually gifted ones among you must have noticed that this piano isn't making any piano sounds. And it's because it's missing this. This is what the pipe assembly looks like now. And no, this uneven arrangement was not intentional. It just happens to be the most space efficient way to arrange the pipes. Let's connect the two halves and now we have the first playable prototype. So let's try it out. Okay, there are a lot of things that we need to fix. First, the key travel is too long. Every key press feels like pressing the clutch pedal in a 1997 Honda Civic. It didn't seem odd in the single key prototype, but when you want to play notes that are adjacent on the keyboard, it gets very tricky. I was worried that decreasing the key travel would affect the loudness of the sound because shorter key travel would mean the hammers descend from a smaller angle above the pipes and thus strike with less force. But in my testing, it didn't make a noticeable difference, so I decreased the key travel from 10 degrees to 5 degrees. Second, the assembly for this thing is a total nightmare. It feels as if an incompetent idiot has designed it. Wait a second. Especially the part where you need to align the hammers at a specific angle. It's just such a pain in the ass. So to fix that, I am going to build a mechanism to engage and disengage the teeth between the hammers and the keys. This is what it looks like. The hammers can now be assembled with the piano in upright position thanks to a spacer for proper alignment and a movable axis. Once the hammers are in place, you can just push in the end caps and lock the whole thing in place. The third issue is that there is more plastic on plastic contact than a Kardashian family gathering. The clacking sound is really distracting but I think I know where exactly this sound is coming from. When you lift your finger too quickly after playing a note, the rubber band immediately pulls the hammer back which causes the front end of the key to strike the base of the keyboard really hard. I tried adding some double-sided foam tape to all of the points of contact to reduce the rattle and it worked to an extent, but then I realized that the hammers themselves rattle a lot and that was like 90% of the noise. So to fix that, I designed a dampening bar that you apply a couple of layers of double-sided tape to and then you can attach it to the piano so when the hammers revert to their original position too quickly, this bar will slow them down with the soft double-sided tape, thus reducing the clacking sound by a significant amount. Now it sounds more like a piano than a typewriter which is convenient because this is a piano. 
Okay, so at this point, we've fixed all of the major issues with the design. And now we can start making some cosmetic changes to actually make it look like a piano. But before we do that and test this thing out, I want to tell you that I'm giving away another 3D printer with this video. I'll pick a random subscriber from the comments section in a month from the release date of this video. Now, after making some cosmetic changes and printing the final design out, this is what it looks like. A 100% 3D printable mini piano. Well, except for the rubber bands, but if we all collectively agree to lie to ourselves, it can still be 100% 3D printable. But anyway, let's now try it out and see how it actually sounds. I am by no means a musical person, so please don't roast me. I'm sorry, but you should have seen that coming. But in any case, if you want to build this fun little project for yourself, you can find the 3D print files on my Gumroad and my Patreon with all of the assembly instructions and print specifications. Links will be in the description. Also, here's a 50% off coupon for the first 200 people who get the files for the piano. I've also made a bunch of other designs that you might be interested in, so feel free to check them out at the same links as well. Now, if you're still watching, you're legally required to subscribe to my channel. Well, okay, maybe not, but I'm trying to reach 50,000 subscribers by the end of this year, and I know it's going to be basically impossible, but let's try anyway. And as usual, a special thanks to my Patreon members for unconditionally supporting my questionable life choices. Sorry it took me two months to get this project out, I'll try to be more consistent from now on. I guess that's about it for this video, like, comment, and subscribe if you feel like it. Consider watching this video next, and I'll see you later. Bye! You and I, we are so random You bring the darkness to the light, split the atom I ignore the fact that this will never last